Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today the video you're about to watch is part of our Patreon Quilt Along series. With that Quilt Along series what we do is we actually film and you are quilting along with me every step of me quilting a custom quilt. So I hope you enjoy this and if you want to see more what we do is we release about one out of every 12 here on YouTube. Um, but if you want to see a ton more content, head over to Patreon and subscribe. I hope to see you there and enjoy the video. Dreaming. The wool is going to be towards the top and then the 8020 is going to be towards the back so that that way it will hang Dreaming. completely straight. Dreaming. Now, whenever I'm doing a filler or any type of an edge to edge, I always like to use my crew. And I do have a tutorial on that. Ruler itself, and I want to make sure to walk my hand with the ruler so that that way I'm not holding my hand back here and the ruler is bobbing up and down and has the opportunity to go up and hold her. So we have our quilt loaded that we just had hanging up finished and you saw the finished work. Now um, I'm actually um, doing this a little bit in reverse since I didn't hang it before I loaded it and go through a here's what I'm going to do. Um, so what I'm going to do now with this first row is we are going to go in and we're going to ditch all of this. That means what I'm going to do is I'll probably be retraveling my ditch. Uh, to work on uh, getting everything ditched within each throat space. I am thinking in here, um, and I again, I may have, I may change my mind when you actually see the finished work um, at the beginning, but I believe in here I'm going to do some sort of really cool um, curved crosshatch, um, keep it a little bit simple to show off the um, Celtic knots in the center of the um, wedding ring blocks. And then um, here on each of these, the actual knots that are winding their way through each other, they're going to obviously be ditched. And then I think I'm going to go in about a half of an inch and I'm going to echo in a half of an inch all of that. So that that way that's going to keep this stable. Um, I might go three quarters of an inch. I haven't quite figured it out. Um, but that way there's not going to be any puffiness going on here. Um, I do have a double bat in here because it needs it. It's got some fullness because there's a lot of bias on this particular quilt. Um, she did an amazing job piecing it, but combining the two methods, you almost just can't get away from a little bit of the fullness. Now you can see here, 
uh, just like at our beginning shot. Um, here starts the, sorry, here starts the area where what we actually have is the start of our double wedding ring, kind of a feel to the quilt. And so again, here I'm going to be ditching here and here, and I'm going to be combining a um, Celtic knot medallion in the center here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the computer to drop in my Celtic knot. So that will be the only computerized portion of this particular quilt. Um, and again, the double wedding ring portion is kind of the on point center, as we saw at the beginning of this tutorial video when you saw the whole quilt finished. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get started with our ditch work. And then we will go step by step on what I'm doing to this as we go. Oh, let me add one more thing. Because of this fullness here, where we've got this upper area that's a little bit on point, you can kind of see it's not, again, she's an amazing piecer, so there's not that much fullness. There's just a little bit, but what I'm actually going to do, so you can see how to handle something like that. Now, these are all light fabrics, so I don't have to worry about bleed with this particular quilt. I'm going to take my dollar store, heavy hold, starch, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to douse that area where there's fullness. And I believe the only time I'm ever going to have to do this on this particular quilt is at each of the points of the large square on point. Everything else um, looks nice and flat and square. Add a little more again. I want to get it nice and wet. Or I should say, I'm sorry, damp, not wet. We don't want it dripping. So you saw how much I put on there. And... Come over here a little bit. It's a little fullness here. I don't have to worry about any fullness over here on this part or on this part. Everything's pretty stable there. Okay. There we go. Now that's going to dry for about 15 minutes. By the time I get over to this section, it's going to be nice and flat for me. I'm not going to have any of these fullness puckers to deal with. And again, now let me reiterate, if this would have been light and dark fabrics rather than all light fabrics, then what I would have wanted to do is um, do a little bit of masking with some cardstock just so I didn't have all any wetness up near the seam. It, let's say this would have been light, or I'm sorry, if this would have been dark jewel tones here, and this would have been light then what I would have done is I would have kind of masked as I sprayed, just to kind of keep the dark and light edges away from each other. Okay, so now we're going to let that dry for a little bit. I'm going to head over to this side, and we're going to start our ditch work. So again, we have our inner edge basted, and it's within the eighth inch, because we know that the binding is going to cover that. Um, and I've squared it off nice, so it's nice and square. Um, and I've worked any fullness in throughout. I'm not pushing fullness down or up. I'm keeping it evenly distributed. And also what I wanted to do is I want to test to see how far down within my throat space I can go to do my ditch work. And as I see this, I can do anything down to here. So any of these I won't be doing completely. I will just be doing the up around there. And you always want, kind of want to test that if you need to... Um, uh, if you don't have a muscle mem memory of your machine, what you might want to do is just put a little piece of string or something right down here just so you kind of know where that is or make a chalk line if you want. But I already know that it's going to be at the bottom of this guy right here. So I have isocord 40 weight in my top and in my bobbin, and it's a nice neutral gray. I also have a uh, creamy yellow that I'm going to go in here to do my echo work inside there. Those are the two threads that I'm going to be using. I have a nice double bat because this is going to be out west where it's going to be um, warm. So we want to make sure that it's not going to be too hot of a quilt. So I have a nice um, poly down 
And then I do have, because of the size, and we want to make sure that it's stable, and then it has a nice drape, I actually have a, um, uh, a nice um, poly cotton blend under that. So this quilt will always stay cool, but yet it will still show off the quilting. Um, we're going to come here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to lock my stitches. So we're going to do our needle down, needle up. Pull it up, grab my bobbin, okay, we're locked there on the side, I'm going to trim my tail, get that out of the way, and now we're going to get started. Now I'm going to follow this, and I'm going to come down. Okay, now I'm not going to go down here because my uh, throat space is going to end right about here. So I'm going to head up. I'm going to follow that line. Um, I didn't use invisible thread on this. I'm actually using, like I said, a nice light gray that matches the fabric um, because it's a, a fairly monotone type quilt. And so there's not really a reason. Now I'm going to come up here inside that hexagon shape and do that part and then I'm going to follow that back down and now I'm going to come down here that way I don't have to double travel that line when I get up to it now I'm going to come over and again you kind of have to pick your path you just kind of look at it and say okay how can I travel to um, get uh, the best bang for my buck as far as travel path Okay, so now I'm going to come up, and again, anywhere where some of the seams are a little uneven where they meet, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to make a, my line is going to be straight, and that way it's going to fool the eye. Now here, I'm not actually going to come down here and do this, because I wouldn't be able to make it all the way down. So I will save this for my second roll when I roll the quilt, after I go all the way across. Up. Now up here, I am going to go ahead. And I'm going to come down, up, follow that up. Now I don't have to come down and up the, here because I've already done that. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slide up. Up, stop, and now here I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to slide down, pick that up. Head back up. 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 And again, these are obviously the tedious portions of the quilt. This is where you have a nice book on tape or some music on. pick that up now obviously I do have my ruler base on I should have said that right off the bat but we never do ruler work without a ruler base on and I do have my sure foot on the um, machine now I might be switching out from the surefoot when I actually go to do the computerized portions of this. And that way you can see how I do that. Come down here. And now I'm going to come over and I'm just going to continue working my way across, hitting every ditch within my throat space all the way across.
Here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up that bottom portion. Get that done down in this bottom throat space. So I don't have to come back. Go back up there. Again, a few of these lines, we're gonna double travel. Go ahead, pick that up. Up. Now I'm moving and I'm able to move at a really nice clip because we are not doing show custom. We are just doing a nice balanced custom quilt. This quilt I'm looking at probably being on the machine for about two, two and a half weeks because of course I also have other um, quilts on some of the other machines. I'm gonna be Doing a few rows at a time on this one, and then I'll be bouncing around from quilt to quilt. Driving Rich crazy while he's filming. Because that's always fun. Makes me feel good inside. And it gives him experience on how to break down all the cameras and move them to another machine. <laughs> Again, one thing I'm not going to go crazy about is here, and let's get a nice tight shot on this if we can, Mr. Richie. And we have a few places. We've got this, this part right here, if you can, can you go in on there? Okay. So when I go to do my ditch work there, I'm not going to go down, over, and down. I'm going to make a straight line with a diagonal kind of right through there. Uh, I'm going to try to keep my line straight. Because on this one, when the quilting's all done, it's actually going to... Um, Look lovely, that's not going to be so obvious with all the other quilting that's going to be in here, all the other linear design that's going to be on there. Because again, this is going to be a quilt that's going to be used on a bed. Love the colors. She did an amazing job with the choice of colors. Okay, so now here we're starting to get into the section um, where, um, let's see, let's get that in the shot a little bit better, where a little bit over here, this line right here, this seam is where our double wedding ring is starting to be on point there, and the corners um, are gonna meet up with that and kind of separate that. So now I'm gonna go ahead Come back down, 
pull that. Come up. I might as well pick that up on the way over. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to complete this on point 45 degree to kind of stabilize the quilt. And again, I can see that the, um, the starch did its job already. It's a lot flatter. section and I'll stabilize that seam just a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead come back down my 45 and I'm gonna pick that guy up right there back follow the ditch Pick that up, follow the ditch, ish, go down, complete my hexi section. down there for that little bit so I'm gonna come down and by the way I'm having a good arthritis wrist day so I'm able to use my favorite ditcher which is of course the ditcher one if I were having a bad arthritis day then I would use my square ditcher So now we have this whole section is gonna is all ditched, and now I actually went ahead. Um, and if you want to sweep the camera over this way a little bit, Mr. Ritchie, I went ahead and I ditched the rest of this all the way down to begin with, just to kind of get a feel for what I was doing. I have not ditched my curves yet here, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple curves. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna ditch those. Okay, so now. We're starting to get into our double reading ring section. And so now I want to check out curves. And my double X large, you can see, um, it's not bad. Um, but it's not quite the right choice for that. And so my extra large curve actually is a little bit small. Again, I'm not going to be able to get an exact match, but I want something close so that when I pivot the ruler, it's going to work. So now I'm going to use my uh, double X large. Um, I'm sorry. And this was the, um, um, the double X large curve one. This is the curve two. Now this one's going to work a lot better because now it's going to be a lot easier to maneuver this around that curve to stay in that ditch. Okay, so now we're gonna bring our machine over. We're gonna use this one, and that's how I'm gonna do my ditch work in that curve. And then when we get out here to the outer curve, I'm gonna use, of course, the same curve, the double X large, Mr. Curve 2.